discuss to you research abstracts, specifically on um, the types of research abstracts and also the, the things that we should do and should not do when we are writing our own research abstract. Now question, are we going to write our own research abstract? No, because we are not going to conduct our study this semester. We are familiarizing it as of the moment, the types of different types of abstracts so that we can apply it in the upcoming semesters. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that we are, we are all aware of what is abstract because we have been defining it in our past sessions. So I think we've mentioned that it's the summary, it's the executive summary. Okay. But for the sake of those who have forgotten what is abstract, I'll introduce to you again the definition. It is a short summary, although in the outline of our research paper, it is written in the beginning However, we write it once we are finished with our study. For instance, once we are already having our conclusion, because most of abstracts will need to have the conclusion of the study. But can you write without the conclusion of the study? Can you have an abstract without results and conclusions? Yes, you can. What are the components of research abstracts? So basically, it needs to have objective, the objective of our study, that's the goal. Remember, we talked about thesis statement in, during midterms. So this is our objective. That's the first part of our abstract. We can have a very short background or overview of the study. Then we have our methods. Then we have our results and the conclusions of our study. It may also have objective methods and scope of our study, but mainly we have these four. These are the different types of research abstract. We have actually um, another type, which is highlight abstract, but I do not want to um, discuss more on the highlight abstract because it's not um, commonly used in the academic writing. Of the three types of abstract that you see on your screen, majority of the researchers or majority in the academic writing, we use the informative abstract. The descriptive abstract that's commonly used um, prior to having the um, summary or the results of your study. So you write it beforehand, like when you are going up to, to present your proposal, you can have an abstract already, given that you have the descriptive abstract. Can you also have descriptive abstract um, as your abstract, type of abstract, right after you made your research, right after um, your conclusion, yes you can, it's up to you. In the descriptive abstract, we have the three components. We have our purpose, our goal of the study. Second, we have the methods. And third, we have the scope. No results, no summary of the study, no conclusions of the study. Again, it mainly explains the goal and the methods of our study. In the informative abstract, they do more than describing or explaining the goal and the methods. In the informative abstract, they have all three components from the descriptive abstract and they added two more which is the results and the conclusions of the study. In the descriptive abstract, we have 100 words or less, no, 150 or less. Informative abstract, we have about 300. It should not go over 300 words. Now, the critical abstract, this is rarely used, but it is part of um, the academic writing because it includes the validity, reliability, 
of the study. So we have judgments and comments about the study itself, now, which we do not have this in informative and descriptive. To, to what is validity and reliability, I will discuss that to you in a different session. These are some of the things that we need to remember in writing our own research abstract. We must define the first abbreviation. What does it mean? We can use abbreviations, but we do not overuse it. We do not abuse it. So the first abbreviation, we define it. And the next abbreviations, there is no need for us to define. However, again, we should limit the use of abbreviations. Our objective of the study must be clearly stated. And this is our thesis statement. Our goal should be clearly stated. The results and conclusions must relate to the objective of the study. So once you have the conclusions and results, we need to double check. Are we answering what our goal is? Are we able to hit our goal? The scientific units must be included as needed. What does it mean? When it is appropriate, we have to use it. So when there are numbers and there's a need for us to provide units, we have to include that. And we use active voice rather than passive voice in writing our abstract. And what abstract should not have? Our abstract should not have the following. Citations from our review of related literature and studies. So all in-text citations must be just in our chapter 2. And all reference lists must be just in the references, in the bibliography part. We must not have incomplete sentences. And again, with the abbreviations here, I'm only um, warning that we should not overuse it. We should not have images, no graphs, no um, illustrations as well. And it is not appropriate that we have to put a very long background of the study. Otherwise, we are already doing our chapter one. So a very short background and then the objective of our study. Personal pronouns, they are prohibited in our abstract. Thank you, everyone. And that ends our discussion about abstract, the types of abstract, and the things that we need to remember in writing our own abstract.